and welcome to our first Cruxcast. Today's special guest is Simon Biltcliffe, Dr. Simon Biltcliffe. Simon's a very special person. He's the CEO and founder of successful companies. He works with sports clubs, he works with universities, he works with councils. He's a serial networker, a serial innovator, and an all round good guy. Simon says some really good stuff on this Cruxcast. I hope you enjoy it and look out for more to come. Elevator world. pitch, boom. Yes. Right, we are a marketing services business which help customers find more customers that they want to sell to and yeah. keep their customers they've got longer through acquisition strategies, through retention strategies, through omni-channel uh, marketing communications. We develop our own software to deliver it and we can save anybody a third on their print spend. So it was because of that, 30 second speech that I wanted to talk to you because this little podcast, Cruxcast, whatever you want to call it, was supposed to be about sales, market and BD, quality, health and safety, all those good topics. But things have changed recently. The world has fallen off the edge of a cliff in the last uh, 36 hours, um, which is pretty astounding. And it's a really interesting time for you and me to have a uh, sit down and have a chat. Yep. So as you can see, uh, in the yellow shed of wonderment here in Bicester in Oxfordshire, uh, we are devoid of most of the team. We have a uh, few people in that are doing essential work that can't work from home. But other than that, everybody's scattered to the four corners of the earth. So, um, I, I, you know, if you look at business development, yep. for the first time ever, you can pick up the phone and ring anybody. Yep. So I have people ringing me up saying, uh, or email me saying, you got time for a chat? Um, so, you know, big companies, billion pound companies and SMEs and all that, just having a chat. And everybody, literally everybody, has gone, mm hmm, like yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, like, oh my God. And it's the so, first time in history that... What, that... what does that mean for you guys? Without getting into too much personal detail, but the, the kind of impacts that you're facing. Well, the, the, I mean, apart from the shock of uh, forecasting, not going to be hit, um, yeah. that um, for us, it, with my Marxist capitalist uh, business model, it's actually really exciting because we've got a lot of cash in our business. Um, that we saved up through retained profits over the years. Um, so we could last without any orders coming in at the overhead cost of the business, uh, which is about a quarter million pounds a month. Uh, we could last for two years without getting an order. Wow. So we are unusual in that. But that's part of the resilience of built, building in uh, on a uh, business model like ours, where we use capitalism to create value, uh, but we then share it out amongst the Marxist. That's given us a fantastic opportunity. So we just revisited our value proposition to, to market, using marketing terms. So I looked at suppliers. How can I help my suppliers with that? Well, we're going to pay them all in seven days from here on. Right. So okay. that gives us a source of competitive advantage and it does the right thing for the right reasons for the greater good. Our suppliers will love us uh, for that. And w when we come out of this, which we will, obviously, then um, they will never forget how we help them in times of adversity. And with our customers, we're trying to extend the credit as long as we can in line with our uh, company policy insurance uh, policy that we have with insured customers and work with them if they need a plan to um, payment plan, we'll work with our insurers to help them uh, along that way. And of course, with staff, we're going to commit to uh, paying them, looking after them, family first policy. So everybody's at home. We, I closed it last Thursday, ahead of the curve. Um, and uh, everybody, we had the world's most genteel burglary go on. Everybody walking out ever so quietly with, with their screens and with their you know, chairs and all this kind of stuff and boxes of gear. But that does make you realize that as a business, you are people. That, yeah. you know, it's a bag of people all aligned to deliver something. Yes, we have signature processes and we have supplier relationships and we have client relationships and we have software that we deal with, but actually it's all about the people. And as soon as it's a business without people, it, absolutely nothing. So this is where you've got to keep your people together, keep over communicate, uh, keep the spirit, keep the love uh, going all the way through it. There's a lot on LinkedIn and social media. Everybody's at distance, obviously, about about business leaders that are talking about 
you know, giving information to the staff connected, but there's also a lot of business leaders that are really nervous and just panicking about mm-hmm. sales, and revenue and EBITDA and all of that. Yeah. They maybe haven't given out as much information, but I think you're absolutely right. Um, there's a hell of a lot going on just now about diversification and what people can do quickly, differently. Is that something you're planning on doing or are you going to stick to the core? No, I think um, what you are going to see is that where, the way we come out of this is going to be very different to the way we came into it. However, what I want to do is look at resource allocation within our cost base and 80, 75, 80% of our cost base is people and look at the right type of behaviors and things we will need going out. And so our focus now isn't on, you know, our, you know, this month, next month. Uh, ours is in the next three months time, what are we going to go out to market with, which will take us, redefine our market in the next 10 years. So we're looking at how we think that the world is going to change as a consequence. Things like you and I video conferencing, uh, people, uh, mobile first, everything. Uh, it's interesting. I got this. This was in our toilets. We have, uh, it's usually not something I bring. This is our thought for the week. Every week we have a thought for the week. And what the, the thought for the week is, if you're doing business the way you were doing it, business five years ago, you're on your way out of business. And I've just changed it to, and I'm going to post it on social media, five days ago. Yep. You know, it's that, that epoch changing. We don't have the many in a commercial life. You don't have many uh, days like this. And you've got, uh, you know, where you've got a full reset of the way that the business is done. Now, if you look back at, through your business books, you will see that people like Dell, people like Ryanair, people like all of these people that now you look at you know amazon they all came out of doing something radically different at times of crisis and they then redefined their marketplace and that's what we want to do in uh, print management and marketing service because it allows us to you know we we've got the ability to um in, look long term when everyone else is looking short term so i'm looking at marketing how do we market ourselves to build our brand over this time how do we uh, get the software engineering skills that we need to scale up the development pathway that we get these are the kind of things that we can you know times of volatility and stuff we can be a very steady influence in uh, uh, for people working with us in a maslovian hierarchy of needs way we've got stability we've got security we've got respect we've got you know and people looking after each other but we build on that to get the right talent to take us to the next le- level. And we look at, uh, we've got a, a pause. You've got time in your diary. Yeah. So use it, in, invest it wisely in actually looking, reading, thinking about how when you come out of this, we can absolutely hit the ground running and redefine our particular segment of the market. Things that you're going to do, things that you're thinking about, what's important today? Uh, what's important today is literally today uh, we've got a, in our trade press we're going out to um, market to our suppliers who are sitting there uh, with wide-eyed, scared look on their faces to say we're paying in seven days. With our key suppliers, these are people that we've traded with over the long period of time, not just some, you know, people that have come like Monsters Inc. towards us saying help us. You know, these are people that we, you know, that we, that we trade with on a regular basis, um, and also look and calm the ship you know when you've got three months marketing campaigns being taken off your board like that and you've got people in house with these customers and their marketing team has had to sc- literally been uh, sent home and repurposed within the, the you know to pack boxes and all this kind of stuff these are quite a worrying time so you know as a leader of course you've, you've got to um, be here be very visible be uh, good, a good communicator with people, um, show a short-term s- series of, uh, of steps that you need to take, but also um, you've got to focus people on pro- productive tasks, which is the future-facing um, way of, uh, of what we're going to do coming out of here. And of course, in, in the meantime, get people on the phone, have a chat with their customers uh, yep. to say, don't sell, just absolutely don't sell, see how they're doing. You know, these people are sat at home. Just, just, just have As a chat with them. You know, just, you're human. You know, you like them. You deal with them every day. Just see how they're doing. See if there's anything we can do to help them in their particular circumstance. Nothing I guess to do you and I have been around for quite a while in, in different industries, but we've all seen, we've all, we've all experienced the market fluctuations, the, the government edict that means that 
market X is a little bit down or that like for me, oil and gas getting oh. pounded every couple of years in the cycle. But I think the thing that sort of rams this home to everyone is it's your clients, it's your suppliers, it's the guy next to you, it's your gran, it's your kids, it's the shops, the cinemas. I've never seen, we've never seen everything everywhere to everyone. I mean, uh, it, 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 of course, it's unprecedented. I mean, we've been around, we've seen, you know, cycles, uh, we've seen shocks, we've seen all this kind of stuff. You, you've never seen a uh, government actively but, uh, barring people from economic activity. Uh, some spurious uh, idea of 330 billion put into, well, actually, all you're doing is loading the, their decision to stop economic activity. So your revenue goes like that and your costs carry on like that. That loss that you're doing, all they've done is said, well, you can borrow some money from the banks to make up yeah. that gap. And yeah. uh, uh, that's all right, isn't it? Well, of course not. Except I mean, it's, the Meyer. it's, hold on a sec, you've made this decision and now I'm having to pay for this because everybody's rightly kind of decided to hold on to things. And you're asking me to take a loan out with a bank that I didn't want to or didn't need to do. Um, and you're going to, if I don't pay it back, then you're going to pay them. So that means if I don't pay it back, I'm bust. Uh, and if mm. I do pay it back, I've got a huge amount of costs that I didn't... Uh, you know what I mean? It's, it's, Where do I sign? <laughs> it's it, un, unbelievable. Um, so, you know, yes, of course, they need to do a mortgage um, freeze for three months, a rent freeze for three months. And, you know, these kind of things, proper meaningful thing, and guarantee people's in, income up to a level as long as they can prove that this company will need needs it, which isn't difficult to do when you look at costs and, you know, I'm no financial guru, but I can see a cost base and I can see a, a forward income and you know there's going to be a gap there. So the government should put money in there and it'll be paid back over tax credits over, you know, or whatever. But loading people with debt, companies with debt is the most ludicrous thing. Now, luckily, because of the cash balance we've got in the business, it allows us to ignore all of that and focus on what really matters, which are the people that we work with, the people that work here, and the strategy going forward so I can give them a great future uh, coming out of this, which is going to be in a three to six month period. You look beyond that and you know we're on it and we, we can hopefully take, uh, take the market by storm at the other side. Stuff. The last time we were talking, you were talking about community collaboration and all of that. I guess that's still there, but maybe on hold a little bit just now because you need to put out fires at home. Um, um, yeah, I mean, no, I, I think it's more than, than ever that you need to reach out to the community. And I think hopefully the two or three good things will come out of this. One is you appreciate what matters in life. So a lot of people get wound up in their own kind of ego in business and, uh, you know, the trappings of it and whatever. And actually, when you get back and you realize that you don't really know your kids and you don't really know what's going on around you, the people that live next door and whatever, I think. You hopefully it'll give a bit of a, a more localized reset for most most uh, uh, well, many people. I, I tend to do speeches at these kind of you know executive breakout things where they're going sitting in a yurt and find themselves after uh, thirty years of being an absolute at work. You know, um, uh, whereas now I'm hoping that people will appreciate what, what matters in life. Second thing, I hope people you know, like this will be more comfortable with video conferencing yep. so that we don't have to travel around a million miles to see people. Let's, let's do this as, a, as the, the default. You know, it's very personal. It's nice. We got used to it. A bit of reticence to, to, until you get comfortable with it. But actually, this is a, a fabulous um, way of reducing our carbon footprint. And thirdly, and this is a very personal and smug thing, all these people have got diesel saying, oh, tell me about your range anxiety because I've got an electric car. All of a sudden, with diesel starting to run out, I, start, I, I, I can start to them saying, how far have you got in your tank? I could just plug into any three-pin plug and I'm fine, mate. How about you? How far you got to go? So all of this, uh, uh, this uh, electric, electrification of cars, it's a, a most amazing thing. And uh, hopefully it's that kind of thing. We'll reduce the carbon footprint, reduce the emissions, and work smarter in a more localized way so you can actually f not just do the right thing, but do, uh, do the good for everybody around you. Very good. Listen, we've hit the, the zero oh, hour, magic. 20 minutes max. Uh, that's fine. Nice that's to fine. speak to you. Nice to see you, mate. And yeah, good uh, look you, after yourself. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, all the best to all, your, all your, your peeps and your family and all the rest of it. And we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.